A lot of the announcements that came out at the Samsung Developers Conference and after it will change the way Samsung SmartThings works in your home. You should have both Matter and Thread on your SmartThings V3 or AOTech hubs. If you have a V2 hub, a Samsung Wi-Fi hub, a 2022 Samsung television, a smart monitor, or a family hub fridge with stated hub features, you will also get an upgrade to have matter, just not with thread. If you bought a Zigbee USB dongle to work with your fridge or television, you'll get an update on that device that will add thread to it. But if you're worried because you have a V2 hub or another one without thread, you don't need to worry because Samsung told us that any other matter and thread certified border router like the Google Nest Hub Max, Nest Hub second generation, Nest Wi-Fi, the Apple HomePod mini, the Amazon Echo fourth generation, Eero routers with thread, and I'm sure in the future many others will give you what you need to get thread working with Samsung SmartThings. So you don't need to upgrade your hub. You don't need to do anything. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the updates we got from Samsung at their developers conference, because there was a lot. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and Samsung gave us a really toned down keynote address at their SDC conference. But despite it being less flashy than some of the other events this month, there was a lot packed in and even more that came out after the event. Samsung SmartThings is now central to the overall plans at Samsung. And it was front and center during the keynote address and in a lot of the developer sessions that were held. With the introduction of Thread into the SmartThings system, we saw a number of other companies become partners that weren't previously possible. I showed you the demonstration at IFA just a month ago where Eve had their products working with Matter using Thread, and one of those demos was with a SmartThings hub. Eve's products and logo were shown as a SmartThings partner, and we will see many, if not all, of their Thread devices come to SmartThings, and really soon. Maybe the most shocking new partner was Akara. I initially thought that their logo showing up on the list of partners would mean that only their future Thread products would gain compatibility, but Akara's demo at the event showed many Zigbee products in their existing lineup working with SmartThings. This is exciting because it's a whole new set of cheap Zigbee devices to use with SmartThings, and if they work out well with the new Edge drivers, they could become some of the most recommended devices today. We saw Nanoleaf too, as they were part of the new lighting experience alongside both Philips Hue and GE Sync. Now GE Sync is not even in the app right now, so they are a new partner as well, and I think that's because companies like this have all stated that they're ready to go with Matter very soon. The new lighting experience was stated to be much more exciting with both video and music synchronization options. And if I'm being honest, the controls for lighting in SmartThings couldn't be less exciting today. So it's gonna be nice to see some of their controls get better. But there was a bit of a theme of requiring Samsung devices and creating a little bit of isolation within SmartThings from other systems despite matter. There were a number of announcements that happened at the event and then after with other media. Number one, the Music Sync feature appears only available on Galaxy devices and it's unclear if the whole lighting experience will be somewhat limited to the phone you have too. If this is the case, Samsung better rethink it because that's not gonna play very well on social media. Number two, Samsung said that their televisions will be matter controllers but that their televisions won't be matter devices that could be controlled in other systems. Number three, Samsung again reiterated that their hubs would not be Zigbee and Z-Wave bridges for the matter standard, which I see as a real miss and I'm personally disappointed. This was a chance to bridge the old and the new and provide more faith in the matter standard being different than previous smart home standards. 
Those are painful things because they are going to segregate our smart things from other systems and other devices we own. But if you're someone using smart things already, there was something buried within the developer sessions that I think is almost more impactful than Matter, Thread, and all the new partners. See, Matter is going to work with a few device types on day one. Matter only covers Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and Thread devices today, and only ones within those certain device types. So with SmartThings, you will already have a bunch of ZigBee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi devices that won't be covered by Matter. That's where the Edge driver program is so important. Edge enables locally connected devices with ZigBee, Z-Wave, Thread, and Wi-Fi or Ethernet connections. And those devices can be Matter compatible or not. This would include devices like cameras, which have thus far been ignored by Matter. And what I'm about to tell you was a stated coming feature for the SmartThings platform, so buckle up. SmartThings compatible cameras will be able to process images locally, which means that the latency associated with having automations run based off of cameras will disappear largely. So not only will they use it for human presence detection for us to use in our automations, but they will be able to provide specific individual-based presence detection or allow you to have different automations than your spouse. They will also use this local processing power to provide you a snippets or clips of whatever you'd like to display on their television screens, smart monitors, or phones and tablets. Specifically, if you have a dog named Rover, you could ask smart things to display your daily snippet about what Rover was doing around your home and you could get it to display on all of those different screens. There's still a lot that has to be sorted out with that. For example, where's the storage capacity and what kind of cameras will be able to do this? And will there end up being some kind of subscription associated with any of this or all of this? Still, what it tells us is that Edge is much more than matter and that more features are on the way based on Edge. Now it's time for a few rapid fire announcements that came out. Samsung SmartThings V3 and AOTech hubs are fully matter certified now and they're one of the first devices to be so. Many services like Pet Care are already transitioned to Edge so they'll be local too in many cases. One UI 5 was launched at the event and it features a number of new customization options for wallpapers in your home screen, which is pretty normal for a new OS. But the best demo for One UI 5 showcased modes with SmartThings. Modes gave users the chance to customize how their phone and their home behaved by just answering some questions. Modes will now allow you to do things like filter out calls, texts, and more. You can filter individually too, so you make sure that everyone except your boss, otherwise known as your wife, are stopped from bugging you anytime you want. The Google Home app and the SmartThings app will be able to pass Matter devices between the two applications seamlessly early next year. That's called Matter's multi-admin feature, but it's a bit easier than that as you won't have to do any setup in the second app. All of these new partners and lots of the new coming features are because of the newer Rules API and Edge. In fact, I've been told about a number of Edge smart apps being developed by other companies already outside of this conference. Bixby is still around and based on the way folks at Samsung are speaking about it, I would say that Samsung is at the same place Apple was a few years ago with Siri. We all thought it was kind of terrible, but they were turning it into an action engine, which means over time, Siri became really good at doing things for us in our home, not being the best at giving us information. Bixby is being moved to more on device and less cloud-based, again, like Siri. However, like Google, there's a new Bixby text call mode where you can talk by texting, which seems slower than picking up the phone, but what do I know? The Home Connectivity Alliance is still growing and includes televisions, HVAC systems, and other appliances. 
The partners list is pretty good already and what it will mean is that you could take an LG appliance and set it up in the SmartThings app for control and vice versa. That alliance though is stated as cloud to cloud based so it's weird that the televisions from Samsung would be controllable over cloud and not locally with matter. I understand nothing here. In everybody's least favorite topic to do something about but favorite topic to complain about Samsung is giving you a very similar privacy page to what Google currently gives you to manage your account there. But my favorite part of the privacy and security segment was that Samsung is at least looking at connected device security and is working on making sure that the entire network is secured based on their Knox platform. Bot Handy is going open source so other developers can do something better with it than Samsung has. Also, who knew this guy actually worked at Samsung? Like, I, I thought he was a paid actor for events. The guy's got charisma. Now, if you haven't seen the Samsung Developers Conference keynote, then it's definitely worth a look, because there's a lot more in there that I'm not talking about today. So check that out. It's up on screen. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.